This video is brought to you by PayPal, the simple and safe way to spend, send, and receive money. Download the app today. Every leap of civilization was built off the back of slaves. Well, that only took 35 years. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 facts about Blade Runner 2049. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're taking a look at interesting trivia regarding the much-anticipated sequel to Blade Runner. Your story isn't over yet. There's still a page left. Number 10. Rick Deckard, Human or Replicant The original Blade Runner left matters open-ended, allowing the audience to decide whether Rick Deckard is human or replicant. Even the film's cast and crew have never been able to settle on a definitive answer. It's too bad she won't live! But then again, who does? For what it's worth, however, Philip K. Dick, who penned the novel that started it all, wrote Deckard as a person. While Harrison Ford and screenwriter Hampton Fancher see eye to eye with Dick, director Ridley Scott believes that Deckard is a replicant. When asked how the sequel would address this highly debated question, director Denis Villeneuve gave an appropriately ambiguous response. The thing that I must say is that I love mystery. I love uh, shadows. I love doubt. I would just want to say to the fan that we will take care of, of that mystery. I, I will take care of it. Number 9. David Bowie was eyed for a role. Although he's best remembered for his singing career, David Bowie's charismatic presence made him a natural for the silver screen as well. He played Jareth the Goblin King in Labyrinth, physicist Nikola Tesla in The Prestige, and even himself in Zoolander. If nobody has any objections, I believe I might be of service. During the casting for Blade Runner 2049, Villeneuve considered Bowie for the role of Neander Wallace, a replicant manufacturer. This notably would have re-teamed Bowie with Ridley Scott, who had previously directed the musician in a 1960s ice cream commercial. Before anyone could offer him the part, however, Bowie sadly passed away due to liver cancer in 2016. Thus, the filmmakers decided to approach somebody with a similar rock star quality. Enter Jared Leto. Number 8. Jared Leto filmed his scenes in two weeks. Speaking of Mr. Leto, his time on the set of Blade Runner 2049 flew by almost as quickly as the Joker's appearance in Suicide Squad. All of that chit chat's gonna get you hurt. Oh! After being cast as the cunning Neander Wallace in August 2016, Leto set out to shoot his scenes the following month in Budapest, Hungary. Leto reportedly finished his work on the film in roughly under two weeks. It's probably a good thing this was such a short shoot for Leto, as we can't imagine those creepy contact lenses were especially comfortable to wear. You do not know what pain is here. In addition to the film itself, Leto also appeared in a short in-world film entitled Nexus 2036, which offers a glimpse into the character's backstory. What is this? This is an angel, and I made him. Number seven, which version is canon? When the work print version of Blade Runner received a negative reaction from test audiences back in 1982, Ridley Scott was forced to make several changes for its US theatrical cut. This wouldn't be the last time the film underwent significant changes either. As of 2017, eight different versions have been released. During an interview with Collider, Denis Villeneuve implied that Blade Runner 2049 would be a self-contained sequel, with some connections to its predecessor. I was raised with the original cut. While he didn't declare one particular version as canon, Villeneuve grew up with the original theatrical cut and appreciated Scott's 2007 final cut. Thus, those are the two versions that primarily inspired him while making this follow-up. Number 6. It's got an Oscar-caliber cast and crew. The Academy might have overlooked Harrison Ford's portrayal of Rick Deckard in the original Blade Runner, but at least they nominated him a couple years later for his performance in Witness. Eli said I could use his tools. I'm trying to fix that birdhouse. Ford will reprise his role in Blade Runner 2049, although our leading man this time around is Ryan Gosling, fresh off his Best Actor nomination for La La Land. Guess I'll see you in the movies. The supporting cast also carry Oscar nominations, with Edward James Olmos, who played Eduardo Gaff in the original, reprising his role and Captain Phillips star Burkhard Abdi will be joining as well. I'm the captain now. The technical crew, which includes composer Johan Johansson, editor Joe Walker, and cinematographer Roger Deakins, has accumulated their fair share of Oscar nods too. Yet, all of the aforementioned names are still waiting to join Jared Leto in the Oscar winner's circle. Why are you so good to me? Bless your little heart. Number five, development began in 1999. 17 years after the original Blade Runner came out, word of a sequel started to circulate. Even then, however, the film spent almost a decade and a half in development hell. Author K.W. Jeter had written a follow-up to Philip K. Dick's original novel, entitled The Edge of Human. 
Stuart Hazeldean adapted this book for a movie called Blade Runner Down, but the project couldn't get the green light. In 2008, it was reported that Travis Wright and John Glenn of Eagle Eye had been attached to the sequel, although they both ultimately exited. You've been activated, Jerry. Who the hell is this? Your compliance is vital. How did you get this number? After multiple attempts went nowhere, it was finally confirmed in 2015 that Denis Villeneuve would direct the long-awaited sequel. Number 4. Denis Villeneuve's last sci-fi film was an Oscar favorite. Science fiction movies usually struggle to gain major recognition at the Oscars. Even the original Blade Runner only got two nominations for Best Art Direction, Set Direction, and Best Visual Effects. So it's really saying something that Denis Villeneuve's Arrival was able to break through at the 89th Academy Awards. In addition to winning Best Sound Editing, the film was nominated for a total of eight Oscars, including Best Director, Best Adapted Screenplay, and Best Picture. Following the success of Arrival, Sinfiles were able to let out a collective sigh of relief, knowing that Blade Runner 2049 was in capable hands. He uh, had such respect for it, but at the same time, he wasn't intimidated by it, and he just made his own movie. Number three, screenwriter Hampton Fancher returns. What do I need help for? Although he began his career as an actor, Hampton Fancher cemented his legacy by producing and co-writing Blade Runner. Outside of a few projects here and there, however, Fancher has been virtually MIA for the past three decades. When Blade Runner 2049 officially started moving forward, Fancher was invited back to help write the screenplay with Michael Green. I want to ask you some questions. In an interview with IGN, Ridley Scott stated that Fancher's initial response was, "Ah, oh, shit, not again. Despite coming off as reluctant at first, Fancher eventually signed on for the sequel. To map out the story, he reportedly worked on a novella that was roughly 100 pages long. Number two, Ridley Scott originally said he'd helm the film. On a few separate occasions over the years, Ridley Scott has expressed interest in returning to the world of Blade Runner. In 2009, it was reported that he was developing a series of prequel shorts entitled Pure Fold with his brother, Tony Scott. They planned to release the series online, but funding issues supposedly got in the way. Two years later, news broke that Scott would direct another Blade Runner movie. Another three years down the line, Scott revealed that he was producing the sequel rather than directing. Scott was reportedly disappointed that he couldn't direct Blade Runner 2049, but due to his commitment to Alien Covenant, the legendary director's plate was already full. Number 1. Denis Villeneuve was hesitant to direct With Scott out of the director's chair, the torch was passed to Denis Villeneuve. In a Collider interview, Villeneuve revealed that he wasn't immediately sold on the idea of a Blade Runner sequel. Although he thought the film had the potential to be amazing, Villeneuve also feared that it could hurt the 1982 classic, which remains one of his favorite movies. Villeneuve was more optimistic after reading the screenplay and receiving Ridley Scott's blessing. Even then though, Villeneuve wasn't sure if he was worthy enough to helm the picture. Despite all the pressure, Villeneuve accepted directorial duties because he felt that he could pull it off. So I said, all right, it. I will do, do it and, and uh, give everything I have to, to make it great. Working with Harrison Ford was also a nice bonus. I don't work here anymore. Give it to hold. He's good. This video is brought to you by PayPal, the simple and safe way to spend, send, and receive money. Download the app today.